Okay, testing one, two, three. I think this thing is on. Sorry about that. G'day, g'day, g'day. How are we doing, people? It is Monday morning for me. Fuck. I gotta be really freaking careful because <laughs> if I have the videos open to test whether or not they're working, if they start auto playing, everybody hears everything. Capturing every single piece of boomerang in, li in 4K live. <laughs> Love it. Um, so, in the morning today... Hang on. Come on, come on, come on. Uh. In the news today, our first story tonight is why some idiots are still ignoring my advice and going near kangaroos in water. Although, frankly, I'd have done it too. Make sure you stick around to find out why. Uh, additionally, a teacher has been banned from teaching again after repeatedly showing porn to students. Uh, America now has its first ever space ranger. And how do you steal $1.6 million worth of alcohol? With a tractor, of course. And finally, a New Jersey woman is suing Hooters, but not for the reason that you'd expect. So let's get stuck into it, me, people. Welcome to today's episode of Law, News and Laughter. Where's my camera? Why do I have no camera? NVIDIA Broadcast, Camlink 4. What has stolen my camera? <sighs> well, look, I'm not muted right at the second, but apparently everyone's saying my audio sounds like shit. Uh. Yeah, no one can see me, Tina. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> also, congratulations, people. If you're a member, your chats will automatically be showing up on the screen. Why is my... Where's my camera gone? Why? Yes, well, I mean, it was it was easy to predict the uh, boomer. Turn the lights on. Uh, if I go with the logic capture, that's just going to show a blank screen with the cam link. There it is! I have no idea why. For some reason, uh, NVIDIA Broadcast decided that something else was using my camera some, for some strange reason. So, <laughs> Nicholas, I was not doing great. And I fully appreciate and understand that. Okay. How's the audio sound now, people? Is it still peaking without bass or whatever? Or uh, <clears throat> Yeah, there we go. Okay. Fingers crossed we're okay. Oh, wait. Now it's just letting it... It's, hang on. That shouldn't be happening. Shh. <laughs> One second. One second. Why is it doing that now? Oh, presumably because I didn't update the source. Okay. Oh, well. Camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two. Name the, name the movie. Meh. All right. There we go. Okay. So let's get stuck into this because that was a bit rough. Teething problems, people. I'm trying to add more production value and I keep fucking it up, but uh, we're going to get there. All right. Uh, what's this feature? How do I get it? I shall... Uh, I'm going to let the trade secrets out at some stage, Nicholas, and um, let everybody know. But for the moment, while I'm still testing things, I shall share. I I'll... Um, yeah, anyway. Hang on. Why is it still auto-sharing? It shouldn't be sharing anything. Meh. Okay. All right. Mm, do I need to change that again? I don't think so. I think that's okay. All right. Let's get into the news. Okay. Incredible moment that a man saves a dog being drowned by a kangaroo. 
A man has gone viral after he filmed himself rushing into an outback river to save his dog from being drowned by a wild kangaroo. Uploaded by the Mildura, Mildura Martial Arts School in Victoria, the video has been viewed more than 2.5 million times on TikTok in just 10 hours. I had five separate people send this to me just so that they could get my comment on it. And I'd already commented on it! <laughs> But seriously, this is why you don't go near ca ca near kangaroos. This is why you do not let your dogs necessarily run wild in the bush either, unless they're wearing a studded collar, because the last thing you want is for this to happen, for a kangaroo to get a hold of your dog and for them to try and drown the dog and kill them in the in a river. It is just not not nice. Um, <laughs> second hint. Uh, here's a hint. The second word in the movie is world. Yes. Okay. Wayne's world. We get it. Anyway, here's the... Unfortunately, the man professed his skills at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu were ineffective as he waded in to save his dog from the seven-foot-tall kangaroo. I'm going to punch your head in. Look at my dog. Notice how all of a sudden his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gets him almost around? He's in the water. He is under the water. That's not just his camera. He was wearing a GoPro. And he's out. And there's the kangaroo. Having another go. Dude, get the hell out of there. This is wild. I'm Croatian and today in our supermarket I saw kangaroo steaks and now your stream title pops up on my phone. Well, welcome! <laughs> uh, basically, we just talk shit, look at the news of the day, legal aspects, may look at a case, whatever else. For anyone that else is new, quick rundown. Uh, welcome to Law, News and Laughter, and hopefully you'll find it entertaining. Like, <laughs> Dude, get the f... Get out of there. Like, seriously, don't be stupid. Um, so yeah, so just keep in mind, this thing's seven foot tall, so that, that water is... So the dog's standing up on his hind legs there, more than likely. And that's why I've got to be careful with the audio. Um, <clears throat> people were making all sorts of jokes about the kangaroo humping the dog. But um, uh, I hate to think those animals are as much... I, uh, I think I hate those animals as much as I hate social justice warriors. <laughs> They don't do Muay Thai against the kangaroo, obviously. Well, this thing's a beast, and people were sending all sorts of photos and that sort of thing. Uh, in the video, captioned martial arts are for everyone, even kangaroos. The dog is seen being held above the water by the kangaroo. Rushing in to save the visually distressed pet, the man is heard cursing at the kangaroo, saying, I'm going to, f to punch you in the fucking head. Let my dog go. How far are we into the stream, anyway? Uh, nine minutes? Ah, eh, that'll do. Uh, <clears throat> Only moments later, the kangaroo is caught on video launching at the, lunging at the man with its arms and claws visible before the video cuts to black and hits the water. The muffled sound of the struggle is heard when the video reappears to show the kangaroo standing tall in the river facing the man with the dog now free. The man is seen splashing water at the kangaroo because that's so effective um, before returning to shore while la laughing to himself and cursing the animal, which is unmoved. The dude should have gotten the f out of there. Why the hell would you just stand there? And not only that, turn your back on that thing? Are you kidding me? Idiot. Uh, commentators were quick to rally behind the man's brave act. Look, yes, it was literally a dude hold my beer moment, but still. Uh, with one user stating that they would also fight the kangaroo for their dog. Look, I would probably still give it a go. I would probably get my ass handed to me by a kangaroo. But, um, you know, if it was to protect Angel, yeah, I'd probably do the same thing. Doesn't mean you don't be stupid about it. <laughs> I'm Swedish and know not to fuck around with kangaroos. What's this guy's excuse? It's a good question. Oh, shit, hang on. What the fuck happened there? Um, all right, I'm going to have to do something here. I'm going to bring that back up, and I want to change that. Uh, shit, what is it? Is it um, browser source? This is why I've got to name everything. Is it in the Windows folder? Um, feature chat, there it is. I think that should work. Okay, there we go. See, we, we, we fix things on the fly around here, people. Uh, just one of the multiple animals in Australia that can crush your chest with a kick, amongst other things. This is true. Hold my beer moment is great. Yep. 
it was in the states but in the southwest there would be no fight just a dead root look quite possibly <laughs> you're talking about bush again a little bit um <clears throat> other users from overseas were baffled baffled by the run-in with what was widely seen as an icon of australian culture and fauna so do kangaroo eat dog eat dogs or why is he trying to choke it no they're just assholes and territorial and they will use their abilities to try and choke somebody uh nicholas said a bad word so the program turned itself off <laughs> no no it was all good that was my stuff up i thought i'd um i thought i said it so that it was um it would go down and go under but apparently not but it's all right i felt i've, I've uh uh hayden love felt screw australia for bluey drama queen has seen the newest toys oh oh no oh well uh, <clears throat> atheist stand. hello. Stephanie added, I thought kangaroos drowned bro in front of his dog. That could well have been the result, so he's got to be more careful than that. Looks like another person in a costume, just like the bear in China. It's rather disturbing. Um, and if anyone has ever seen... Uh, hang on. No, you know what? I didn't have it ready. I should have had it. For anyone that hasn't seen the, the jacked kangaroo, the jacked red kangaroo that I use in my thumbnails occasionally... This seven footer was small. So, bet the guy would give a drop bear a go. Eh. <laughs> They're just assholes. <laughs> yep. Maybe a vibrating chair is making them go wiry. It's not a vibrating chair, Mandy. I have a, I have a, a nerve in my leg that just goes off. Anyway. Um... <laughs> seven foot look the, a seven footer is generally like your mid-range for a gray i mean well actually no for a gray a seven foot is probably big for a red kangaroo seven foot you, you treat a seven foot gray kangaroo as like a guy that's five ten five eleven like you know that they're tall but you still make fun of them so i uh, didn't know there were seven foot much less more well yeah they get big it's a legendary picture. I wonder why the Roo was trying to kill the dog. Like I said, territorial. Same reason that the, um, so the iconic video that there is, is the guy that obviously his dog uh, walks up to a red and the red has its claws wrapped around the dog, uses its back legs to try and like uh, slash at the dog's underbelly to try and gut it. Um, and the guy just walks up and full on just punches the kangaroo in the face so that it lets the dog go. Um, but there was absolutely no reason. It's purely territoriality. They're, they're herbivores. They can, they don't eat re they don't eat meat. They don't whatever else. Are they worth eating? Um, kangaroo steaks can be good if they're cooked properly. It's fairly similar to venison. Um, very gamey. Did read that if you grab a roo's tail, they can't really fight and they fall over. <sighs> Mandy, where the hell did you read that? More to the point, why would you try and get close enough to grab a roo's tail? Uh, but yes, they can actually. So what they do is. Um, what people don't really notice is that when they hop along, you sort of see them, like someone mentioned the other day, they put pressure on their tail and then they pop forward. With, they put both of their legs out and they hop like that. Sort of like, sort of like a rabbit. Um, but they use the tail to stabilize and to bounce forward. But they can also use that to spring forward and to attack. Um, I've eaten roux. It's not terrible. No, it's not. Yeah, there's just no fat in them. Yeah. So, yeah. This is why you should always steer clear of kangaroos, particularly if you see them in the water. Because here's the thing, these guys are assholes. They will make it look like they are drowning so that you go in and try and save them. I shit you not, they will do that. And, um, you know, obviously you're going to try and do what you can to save your dog. But just be smart about things is all I'm saying. So. Oh, okay, moving on. Uh, a woman has been arrested for drug trafficking charges near a daycare, school and a drug rehab centre. As you do. A traffic stop turned into a major drug bust in Marietta. Police say a woman was arrested with a lot of drugs that are now off the streets. They said that the expired tag on the car... Look, if you're going to deal with drugs, this isn't... Okay, this is not legal advice. This is in no way legal advice. But, hang on. Uh, if you are going to sell drugs from your car, maybe just check that you don't have an expired tag. Like, don't do things that may attract attention. Like... Don't be, don't be fucking stupid about it. Uh, they pulled the car over at, in, at the intersection of Lawrence and Fairground Street on Tuesday. 
That's when they say they discovered much more than a woman who didn't renew her tag. Investigators said they found guns and a variety of, drug of drugs inside the car. A plethora of drugs, from marijuana to meth to crack cocaine and powder cocaine, said the police officer Chuck McPhillamy. That's an unfortunate name. It's not legal advice, it's common sense. <laughs> Free candy, kids. Blasting on the back end of the audio. Oh, okay, so it is hitting the far. All right, hang on. Might just be because I'm a loud ass. Uh, there, is that better? I've, I've, I've reduced the, uh, I've put the condenser on. So hopefully that won't, that won't be quite so bad. Um, <clears throat> please say that, uh, say there was a lot of it, including what looked, what, what? Including what was referred to as a crack cookie. A crack cookie. Hmm, okay. So a mobile Walgreens. A little bit, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> There was large pieces of crack cocaine that hadn't been broken down for distribution yet. She also had a scale and baggies in the car, further implicating it was for trafficking purposes. Dude, if she has a fucking cookie of crack cocaine, I'm pretty sure you're going to be a fine on the on the trafficking charge. Are you serious? Uh, <clears throat> the 33-year-old Nikaila Mormon, Mor yeah, Mormon, I was going to say moron, but well, she is a moron, was booked into the Cobb County Jail and charged with nine felonies. Police say it's disturbing to know this woman was transporting these drugs through an area that is surrounded by daycares, schools, and the zone, a substance recovery center. <laughs> Crack cookie that explains the, the cookie monster. Well, it, look, it kind of does, especially in that Family Guy skit. You guys are Nazis, man! You guys are Nazis! <laughs> She's just destroying other lives, said Daniel Spinney, a director of the program services at the zone. See, that's funny, because the zone here is like a kid's arcade. Hang on, is that... Surely that... Oh, no, that's just the um the bumper of the car. I was going to say, surely that's not a giant piece of cocaine. Uh, of um, methamphetamine, sorry. Spinney says it makes him angry to know these drugs were found in the area. To be able to come this close, we have daycares and schools in the area and a recovery centre. They should feel safe. They shouldn't have to worry about things like this being around. Police are grateful the car was pulled over before any of the drugs hit the streets. Fortunately, we had officers patrolling that were proactive. They stopped them to, be, to write a ticket because, let's face it, it was a frigging, um, they've got their quota for tickets. I, I, I don't believe that this is being proactive. What the fuck is a crack cookie? Sounds fun. Eh. Um, yeah, I, I'm not so sure I believe the whole thing about being proactive, but... Yeah, man. you can do it. A traffic stop turned into a major drug bust in Marietta. Police say a woman is in jail and a lot of drugs are off the streets tonight. Fox 5's Denise Dillon talked to law enforcement about how it all went down. It was an expired tag that caught the attention of police. Why the fuck does she have the license plate? <laughs> Officers pulled the car over at this intersection. Uh, uh, it wasn't long before like a prop, they discovered still. more than a woman who forgot to renew her tag. She was just having a bake sale. This so. woman was hiding <laughs> drugs in plain sight. It was a simple traffic stop at Lawrence and Fairground Streets. Marietta police noticed a car with an expired tag. Investigators say inside the vehicle, <laughs> the they found taste. guns and a variety of drugs. There was a plethora of drugs, from marijuana to methamphetamine to crack cocaine. I'm sure this guy's great at parties. There was a plethora of drugs from marijuana to crack cocaine. <laughs> okay, now I sound like Nadelhoft. Into powder cocaine. And police say there was a lot of it, including what's referred to as a crack cookie. Those are large pieces of crack cocaine that haven't been broken down <laughs> for distribution yet. She also had a scale and- Holy shit, look at the pieces of crack cocaine! He's not wrong, they look like cookies! Baggies in Look the car, shit. further implicating that this was for trafficking purposes. Look, that's insane! Three-year-old Nikaila Mormon is now charged with nine felonies. Police say it's disturbing to know this woman was transporting oh, drugs through this area, <laughs> very close to a daycare, several schools, and the zone, a substance recovery center. She okay, that's all right. They're just repeating everything that I've already said there. Look, honestly, this just seems ridiculously stupid. But come on, if you if you <laughs> Sounds like Nick's locals chat. <laughs> um, if you're going to do it. 
Okay, you, you... Again, not legal advice. But for fuck's sake, do not make it really freaking easy for... Don't give police a reason to pull you over if you're transporting a large amount of narcotics. Are you serious? Excuse me. She had total bling bling teeth. Oh, God. The cracky monster. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Because we're going to talk about some police misconduct. The Queensland Police Union is willing to challenge officer misconduct rulings after an unmitigated debacle. The Queensland Police Service is facing further potential challenges to bungled internal discipline cases, despite the state government changing the law to validate the unlawful process used to sanction hundreds of officers. The Queensland Police Service was this year forced to rescind punishments, including several sackings and demotions, for about 300 officers after a court ruled the process used for internal discipline was invalid. Internal affairs were actually doing something about some things that police officers were doing wrong. And thanks to a court case, there's about 300 cops that are back on the... Um, what's that? You should look up Jimmy Kimmel Fireman High. This writing is so strange. A little bit, yeah. You know, I have to move these off because I, it keeps distracting me. I'm just going to... No, I don't want to make that extra big. I want to make it so that I can't see it. <laughs> Maybe I'll just move that over there. There we go. That might be quite so distracting. Uh, <clears throat> Sanctions against those officers were then reinstated in August after the state government amended the Police Services Administration Act to retrospectively validate the process. I'm... Okay. Admittedly, I'm not a fan of governments being able to retroactively... Um, like rubber stamp things or like introduce legislation that applies to past circumstances. That's not great. Um, what's that? Extra thick. <laughs> uh, Guardian Australia, which first reve re revealed the bungle in April, now understands that the Queensland Police Union is considering backing fresh challenges. No appeals have yet been lodged, but the police union is understood to be willing to back officers to challenge the reimposed sanctions. The union president, Ian Levers, said the discipline situation was an unmitigated debacle caused by the unlawful actions of senior police. The Queensland Police Service hierarchy has been found by various courts and jurisdictions to have repeatedly acted unlawfully. The union does not resile from protecting the hard-fought rights, entitlements and benefits of all members. The prospect of further challenges backed up by the union has caused significant disquiet amongst the police service, including amongst the ranks of officers who are overwhelmingly union members. One female officer, a victim of harassment by a male colleague who was disciplined by his, for his conduct towards her, said she was concerned about the prospect that some members will now be supporting our abusers. Well, there is that, and that's a little bit of a... What the hell is a bungle? Uh, a bungle is when you fuck something up. It's a lesser version of a clusterfuck. <laughs> well, let's sign up to Morning Mail. <laughs> I'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leavers said no formal decisions have been made and that each matter was assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. The Queensland Police Union legal assistance for police is not guaranteed and there are many police who, whose alleged behaviour, the QPU, does not sanction nor support. Nevertheless, the union will continue to ensure that the QPS act lawfully when dealing with their employees and the union will vigorously enforce compliance by senior police. See, here's the problem. It's a union that's literally policing the police. And, of course, from an outside perspective, everyone's going to be going, well, are they really actually doing what they're supposed to be doing here? Um, also, please remember to hit like and subscribe and double check whether or not you've taken the poll. Uh, <clears throat> All the QPU ask for is that police hierarchy comply with the law. The Guardian Australia it also revealed in April that police have been warned more than a dozen times that its disciplinary system was being run in a way that was unlawful, entirely improper and concerning, but refused to tra change practices. QPS was unable to comment. They've been, not been served with any relevant claims to institute proceedings, a spokesperson said. So it's a bungalow then? A bungle, a beagle lost in the jungle. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, <clears throat> all right, we're all right. America officially has its first space ranger. Check this out. I, I, I love that they've, they're more or less like ripping off the Star Trek logo just upside down and whatever else. I think it's hilarious. Uh, <clears throat> Captain Daniel Reynolds graduated from the US military's ranger school this week, becoming the first Space Force guardian to earn a ranger tab. He's effectively the military's first space ranger. 
Uh, Reynolds was awarded his Ranger tab on Friday, October 13. At the graduation separate ceremony, he was presented with his Ranger, Ranger tab by his father, Army Colonel John Reynolds, himself a Ranger. Reynolds is the first of likely many more Guardians to earn the tab in the service's future. Reynolds isn't going to be traipsing around in outer space with a ray gun like Buck Rogers or Flash Gordon. How do you not go with Buzz Lightyear? Who wrote this? <laughs> but instead he's helping test Space Force's satellite communications capabilities. He currently serves as a test director with the 4th Test and Evaluation Squadron, Space De Delta 12. <clears throat> In Space Force's short history, Captain Reynolds has emerged as a leader as of the service's achievements. Sorry, in the service's achievements. In May 21, he became the first Guardian to graduate from the U.S. Assault School. In April 22, he became the first Guardian to graduate from the 28-day-long Sapper Leaders course. Um... What's wrong with the dad joke? <laughs> we officially broke through the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> As for why an aerospace engineer needs the kind of skills that sappers and rangers have, Reynolds touched on it finish on on it after finishing the Sapper course. One of the worst things we can do as a service is to exclude the warfighter from the engineering process, said C uh, Captain Reynolds. As we move forward, it is imperative that the space test community understands their needs, wants, and concerns. Their frame of reference is of the utmost importance and fielding increasingly advanced space systems. If we in the US have this, your imaginary country will have it soon too. We can always hope. Oh, damn it, the video for us. For God's sakes. Now... Great. So now, now, now NVIDIA is going to start acting up as well. fan friggin -tastic. Uh, <clears throat> uh, to earn his Ranger tab, Reynolds took part in the Ranger assessment course with 30 other service members. The course included 15 soldiers and 15 airmen, while he was the sole representative of the military's newest branch. For more than 60 days, he and the others were put through a grueling, the grueling training process. During the course, he told the Air Force that the training had helped him get a real sense of what the troops deal with in the field and how they utilize tools such as satellite information. At courses like this, we take individuals who are working in space and we get them together with individuals who are at the top, tip of the spear, executing these missions, engaging the enemy face-to-face, -face, he told the Air Force in August. That's where we learn how to design better systems and capabilities. <clears throat> Many Guardians were former airmen with the US Air Force, split off when the service's space duties were transferred to the military's newest branch. Reynolds joined the Air Force Academy in 2013 and graduated in 2017. He initially trained as a test pilot, but switched to becoming an aerospace engineer with the formation of Space Force, transferring to the branch in February 21. He earned a Master's of Science at MIT in 2019. In addition to his Ranger tab, he's also received Officer Leadership Award... What the... Sorry, he also received the Officer Leadership Award for the Ranger class. What field? Starfield? Probably. <laughs> Wait, is that... Okay, all right, never mind. Starship Troopers has begun. Do your part! <laughs> oh, wow, you really can see the chair wobbling around a little bit more when I'm in this camera, can't you? Anyway. Uh, woman suing uh, LASD, alleging traumatizing traffic stop was unnecessary and illegal. An advocate for domestic violence survivors and her mother is suing Los Angeles County after deputies used violence tactics in a 2022 traffic stop in East LA. On September 25, 2022, Gabriela... Ooh, that was close. Uh, Kutantos of Monorovia... Monor Monorovia? Monorovia was driving a rented U-Haul van that she had used to deliver donated furniture. Uh, to a shelter for victims of domestic and sexual violence when she was where she serves as an executive director. LA County Sheriff's Department deputies believing the van was stolen executed a high-risk traffic stop. It's a U-Haul van. A high-risk traffic stop? SpaceNet, Star Troopers, what's next? Kangaroos in space? We can only hope. <laughs> Roos in space! Um... Uh, <clears throat> Where are I? Uh, high risk traffic stop. Uh, 
They held her at gunpoint, handcuffed her, and held her in a lengthy detention for a lengthy detention in the police car. Uh, at all the while, her mother was driving her vehicle alongside the U-Haul, and when deputies pulled her over, she lost sight of her daughter. When Kappa saw her again, she was on the ground with deputies pointing guns at her, the complaint says. Miss Kappas got out of her car and ran up the street towards her daughter, shouting, shouting, What are you doing? That's my daughter. None of the deputies responded as they continued pointing their weapons at, weapons at her. Uh, she thought the deputies might kill her daughter. Despite deputies seeing the rental agreement and having the, the legal rental confirmed by U-Haul employees, they say that deputies kept her in custody for a considerable period of time afterwards. As it turns out, the van had been reported stolen a month earlier, but it was recovered a week after that. So this is purely because the police department hasn't updated their records. The terrifying or traumatizing tactics threatened her physical safety and caused emotional distress to her and her mother. The woman's lawyer alleged that the high-risk traffic stop would or should would what that the high-risk traffic stops have already been declared unconstitutional by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal nearly ten years ago. But the sheriff's department has defied the court and continues to, to terrify and traumatize innocent Angelinos. The incident shows the staff uh, that the sheriff's department is completely out of control, said attorney Brian Olanai. Uh, LASD is sworn to uphold the law, but they have a deliberate policy that violates the constitution every day. It's outrageous. They must be held accountable. Uh, the LA Sheriff's Department did not resp respond to a request for comment by the publication. I'm shocked. I'm absolutely shocked that they did not respond to any anything for that. Space Series 2024. We can only hope. Um, or the rental company didn't report that it was recovered. Look, quite possibly, but even so... How the hell does the um how the hell does a stolen car warrant a high risk traffic stop where someone is held at gunpoint? Like I get that it's like a felony arrest or whatever it is for the uh for the actions taken and the uh stealing of the vehicle and that sort of thing, but I kind of feel like even if something has been stolen and they it's considered a felony, I don't necessarily think that it necessitates the use of, you know, unholstering the firearms and that sort of thing <laughs> what the fuck is an angelino it's a good question i'm just i'm just reading i'm just reading off the page so but um yeah i don't know th th this seems completely unnecessary it's la breathing is a high risk activity there <laughs> um okay i'm hoping that there haven't been any super chats or rumble rants that have come in because i haven't been able to see the new t the new chat page that i'm looking at doesn't specify like they don't show up as colored or anything so i don't know so you just need to be careful with that. Uh, everything is okay with what the cap cops did initially, but after they see the agreement and confirm that the company they confirm with the company they lose probable cause. Probably couldn't have said it better myself. So, uh, you haul and Hertz frequently call in unauthorized use of their vehicles. Hertz is involved in a lawsuit most most of the unauthorized use of vehicles by Black Americans. Shocked. Chats of color, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh god all right uh, teacher banned from teaching again after repeatedly showing porn to students the hilarious thing is from this name i can't tell if it's a man or woman it's a man uh blaine blaine Bl karim was caught on several occasions allowing his students to access and view pornographic images on an interactive whiteboard an IT teacher has been permanently banned from the profession after he, was reportedly, after he reportedly watched pornography pornography with his students. Yeah, that's not creepy at all. Uh, he was caught on several occasions allowing his students to access and view pornographic images on an interactive whiteboard, a teaching misconduct panel heard. The panel was told that the 61-year-old used quiz programs to access explicit content at the Medway Secure Training Center in Kent and was caught in the act trying to enlarge images and play porn videos to his vulnerable students. On one occasion, he was seen watching pornographic material alone with one student whilst laughing and joking. Gross. Gross. Teaching misconduct panel has now banned him from ever teaching in the country again, saying his actions brought the profession into disrepute. That's the problem with it? That it brings the profession into disrepute? Yeah, okay. How old are these students? That's a damn good question, but it's a high school, so... <laughs> Maps go on the wall. Yes, yes, they do. Uh, the education services at the centre, which is now closed, were provided by the time... by an Oh, I stand corrected. It was an educational charity providing. He was the first qualified teacher... He first qualified as a teacher back in 2012, 
Uh, the panel heard in 2019 that the centre reviewed CCTV footage of lessons delivered by him. Further footage was then reviewed and he was reported to the local authority, the teaching regulation agency and the police. The panel found multiple examples of him showing and allowing his students to access porn material during class. During one lesson at the beginning of 2019, he allowed his students to view explicit images via the uh, program at Kahoot Quiz. Ladies and gentlemen, start your wood chippers. I'm seeing a lot of new names here. So, for God's sakes, please make sure you're hitting the like and subscribe button, people. Uh, the following week, the panel heard he attempted to play a pornographic video to his students with CCTV, CCTV footage showing him repeatedly pressing the play icon over an explicit image. More footage from two days later showed him watching porn during class time whilst alone with one student. The panel were also told that the IT teacher inserted his staff level key fob into the interactive whiteboard to enable his students who had more limited internet access to access pornographic material during class. If you have to include a key fob to access this thing, why would you even allow the key fob to do so? They pawned the Kahoot. Yeah. Like, I don't quite understand that. Why, why would you even bother including the allowing the access to pornographic material via a teacher's key fob? Uh, he, was, he was additionally pulled up for footage showing students simulating sex acts during his lessons. Usually in Vice's chat, but rarely in, uh, in the last month, I was here a lot in the Anderson era. Oh, lovely. Cheers. <clears throat> Uh, the panel heard that though some of the some some of the acts were observed by the teacher, the students were neither admonished nor disciplined for their behaviour, which he even appeared to draw attention to in the class during one instance. The misconduct panel found all the allegations against the IT teacher proven, deciding his actions had brought the profession dis into disrepute. He was not present for the hearing and was not represented. Well, how the hell do you how, how do you defend against that shit? Like, yeah, wood chipper. Why is he not under the jail? It's a damn good question. Sounds like the IT guy might be the San Francisco gay men's court. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I think it depends on the actual facts. In high school, we did a lot of degenerate shit, and anyone sounds evil when you word it like this. This is true. But, <laughs> allowing pornographic material in class, like, even at, even at a high school level, this should not be happening. I mean, the only way that this is okay is if it's in, like, a community college or something like that. And I'd like to think that they wouldn't feel the need to report it to the police if that was the case. What beer am I drinking? I am not drinking a beer. I am drinking a caffeinated guarana and taurine drink. I always have my V. Hang on, product placement. I never start my day without a V. If I do, it goes downhill very, very quickly. So get your V today. And uh, Coca-Cola at any point when you actually want to give me a sponsorship for the V, that'd be very much appreciated. Uh, should have made him come and explain. Ew. 100% you don't know if he's a monster or a idiot. Idiot? Yeah. Uh, da -da -da. He's behaviour in facilitating the watching of pornographic videos by students and failing to report serious safeguarding, safeguarding concerns will be considered behaviour that brings the profession into disrepute. Within the approximately nine hours of CCTV footage viewed by the panel, I wonder if they were able to see the screen and they had to sit there and watch it over and over again to make sure that it was actually... <laughs> there was no evidence that he had been physically threatened by a student. Throughout the CCTV footage, he appeared relaxed in his demeanour and on some occasions appeared to be laughing or joking with his students when viewing pornographic material. Finally, the panel were, were concerned that he offered no apology or remorse for his actions despite the likely impact his behaviour would have on some of the vulnerable students in his care. Holy shit, how much longer does this go? The findings of misconduct are particularly serious as they include findings in which they involve students viewing pornographic materi material during class time and failing to report such serious safeguarding concerns. He cannot teach in any school, sixth form college, relevant youth accommodation or children's home in England. Furthermore, in view of the seriousness of the allegations found proved against him, I've decided that he should not be entitled to apply for rest restoration of his ability to teach. Okay, now I'm curious because this is the only one that I had, but I am going to do a little bit of live research right at the second. Give me two seconds. Um... Okay, I found him. Um... Okay, so he has, that hasn't been updated yet from the looks of it. So, what type of school is it without naming it? K 
Okay. No, that page is not working. <clears throat> Campus information. Oh, okay. I think it may have been a college. Interesting. Okay, hang on. Is it saying courses that are available? Yeah, okay. Look, as I, I may actually have to revise here and agree with Creed because it looks like this is a community college. So all the students are over 18. So why the hell was it... Why would you bother reporting that to... Um, the police? I mean, it's not actually a... Oh, I stand corrected. Sorry. No, it's a training center, but it's for kids that don't want to go into college. So therefore it's held with children between the ages of 12 and 18. I stand corrected. Yeah, nope. Get the wood chippers ready. I'll get the torches and pitchforks. <clears throat> so. Uh, where are we? Yeah, the article was very vague. Uh, look up the Two Rivers Haunted House a home, home, homeowner arrested after SA got away with it for 10 plus years. Yeah, that's not great. So. Yeah, well, there you go. Teacher showing pornographic material to kids aged between 12 and 18. Motherfucker. They really needed to actually specify that out in the um, article. I shouldn't have had to have dug that just to get some clarification. Uh, all right, where are we? <clears throat> An Aussie's landlord's patronising advice on how to secure a rental has sparked outrage. <laughs> kind of sharpen the guillotine. <laughs> a landlord's patronising attempt to educate desperate Aussies on how to secure a rental home has brutally backfired. The apartment owner said that they recently privately advertised their two-bedroom unit in Perth on several websites and Facebook groups that were quickly absolutely smashed with inquiries. You'll keep complaining about how hard it is to find a rental in Perth, the person began their online letter. Here's this perspective from the other side on what really happens when you try and rent out your place. This will be good. After organising uh, after organizing after hours inspections two nights in a row to give more people a chance to attend, the landlord said that they received well over 120 inquiries on the property. Of those, he said at least 20 or 30 were attached with, we are absolutely desperate, please help us, or I'm living in my car story. No worries, I'm a human. My heart bled and I was wondering how I could get more properties to help out these people desperate for a rental. The Reddit post continued. Oh, we're on Reddit. Of course we are. Um, <clears throat> explaining that over the following two nights, a total of eight groups of people rocked up, one of which wanted to bring a pet uh, when it was stated none were allowed. Even though I lost count of the number of people that told me they're desperate, the amount that messaged me like I'll be there at six and didn't show was insane, the landlord complained. They even messaged two days, two days later like, is it still available? I kid you not, I've had three great applicants though, so it will rent, but it blows my mind how little effort most people put in. The apartment owner went on to tell lo to tell locals that if they want to rent a home in WA, a nice covering letter explaining things with reference references highlighted, a written reference attached to the application, and all ID documents ready to go goes a long way. Funny thing is, I'm not actually like what? Why does it say 10 a.m. when it's actually 6 p.m.? Because it's 10 a.m. where I am, Mandy. Um. <clears throat> I'm confused. Like, okay, admittedly, when I first started off with this, I was like, well, what the fuck? Uh, landlords really do occasionally need to cut, keep their mouths shut with how they treat people. This is more or less exactly what you expect. <clears throat> um, also, clean up your Facebook page. Okay, there we go. <laughs> A locked page is sus as one of the full middle fingers and face sign tats. Sorry, as middle finger signs and face tats, they said, adding that landlords wanted to hear from potential that a potential tenant has great references. The bond payment plus two weeks rent is flexible on a moving date and wasn't evicted from the previous place for negative reasons. I work in or receive income of. I do not smoke. I smoke only outside. Inside is absurd. You bring the smell in with you. Trust me. This is why I need to finish reading articles before I comment because holy shit, I went from yeah okay I can kind of side with this guy to 
fuck off. <laughs> if you don't have pets, mention I have no pets. Uh, Aussies were quick to slam the lengthy lecture, especially given the housing and cost of living crisis, with hundreds of people commenting on the post within hours. Gee, thanks so much for patronisingly telling us what we already know and have already heard a million times, one of the many, many irritated Reddit users said. It's actually disgusting how dehumanising the whole experience has become. Where well, our landlords have become basically our gods, haven't they? Someone else commented. Several others said that they'd fulfilled all of the suggested requirements and still struggled to find a new rental home for more than six months. Yeah, mate, it's almost as if stressed people make stupid decisions. Another landlord responded. He's getting called out by another landlord. <laughs> I've also had the same experience. My phone nearly overheated from the rush of replies when we had to find a new tenant for our rental. But out of all of 80 messages, we had 11, sorry, we had 12 appointments booked and five actually showed. Sometimes it's just natural stupidity or addiction, but most of the time it's a cocktail of stress, fatigue, and not knowing better, fear, or hopelessness. There's a crisis right now and there's no end in sight. Do you think readers, renters have treated unfairly? It happens, but not all the time. Uh, that's a bit funny. Um, wait, who died? Anyway, doesn't matter. All right, moving on. Uh, Brentwood police officer finished the McDonald's DoorDash delivery after a driver is pulled over. I put this in for a feel-good story because after this... Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> a New Hampshire police officer fulfilled one New Hampshire man's DoorDash off, uh, order after the delivery driver was pulled over. David Eldridge of Brentwood was waiting for his DoorDash order last week to arrive when, police, when a police officer holding a McDonald's bag approached his front steps. There's a knock on the door and I thought, oh... That's DoorDash, and there's a police officer there. And after he left, I thought maybe I should have given him a tip. <laughs> Brentwood police say they pulled over the DoorDash driver for allegedly speeding. Uh, the officer said he ran all the driver's information and it was suspended, the license and the registration for the car. We had to take her car and get it off the road and gave her a ride and she got picked up. Uh, the officer said Officer Robert McCon showed up to the scene to help him out and looked at McCon and said we probably should get that delivered. Sometimes administrative issues can jam you up and it's not really your fault. So we did what we could to try and help her on the scene and obviously help with the DoorDash. So there you go. He legit got three offers and if you aren't a shit landlord, you have to go through the process every few years, put in the effort. Well, show me your ID for this delivery. Smoke the greens and the THC stays on your clothing after smoking always. The, that same THC can be transmitted via contact and will show up on drug tests. CBS tried to take away my son on that basis. And Jesus. Sorry to hear that. Holy crap. Um, all right, where are we? <clears throat> Thieves in Florida use a tractor. Oh, use tractor trailers. Son of a bitch. To steal more than $1.6 million in alcohol from a US distributor. An investigation is underway in Florida after burglars use tractor trailers to steal more than $1.6 million worth of alcohol from a distribution company that carries brands including... Jose Quivet, Quivet, uh, what? Sever, Severo, and Malibu. I can never pronounce the Mexican names right. Actually, you know what? I never pronounce the names not in English right. I fully admit that. Don't call me racist. I don't care. Uh, the theft began during the early hours of July 8 at the Republic National Distributing Company, Distributing Company, located in Hillsborough County, south of Tampa, according to the newly unsealed search warrant obtained by CNN. Between 4.10 and 9.45 a.m., they removed 4,277 cases of liquor from the company that also distributes alcohol from Franzia Wines and Suda Home Winery. Authorities believe that, believe that there is probable cause that the phone contains specific information and technical data and evidence showing that a burglary and grand theft took place according to the warrant. Uh, the thieves referred to in the document as unknown suspects also removed digital recording, uh, digital video recorders used by the alcohol distributors for video surveillance, the warrant said. Located in Gibbs, Gibson, Gibsonton, Florida, RMDC is one of the nation's largest wine and spirits distributors with 14,000 employees in 38 states. Uh, while we are unable to comment at the time because there is an, this is an active law enforcement investigation. We have confidence that law enforcement is handling this matter seriously and taking all necessary steps to find perpetrators of the crime. Using surveillance video from the nearby business and a convenience store, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office deputies were able to identify the tractor trailers used in the burglary, the warrant stated. Deputies later found additional surveillance video from a tractor trail storage facility that showed the three tractor trailers used to remove the cases of alcohol. They reached out, to, uh, CNN reached out to Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office for more details, but not have not yet heard back yet. 
Why have they got Target there? Leprosy is spreading in Florida? When the hell did that... What? Leprosy? Is that, like, is that legit? What the fuck? Oh, okay, moving from one alcoholic story to another. Sunday morning alcohol purchases are now legal. If you're searching for the perfect drink on a Sunday morning, you're in luck. On Saturday, Saturday, Governor Kathy Hochul approved changes to the law that allows liquor stores to open at 10 a.m. on Sunday instead of noon and allow retailers to sell beer before 8 a.m. on Sundays. Across New York, breweries, distilleries, and other alcoholic beverage businesses are creating jobs and expanding economic opportunity, said Governor Hochul. And I'm proud to sign this legislation that will modernize the laws governing the sale of alcoholic beverages in New York. No, they're just trying to encourage more Aussies to get on a plane. And I'm sorry, I'm not setting foot in New York. Uh, State Senator James Scofus, Democrat for Cornwall, uh, who represents parts of Orange County, was the st Senate sponsor for the bill expanding the New York's... Uh, what? Expanding the retail... I don't know where I got New York from. Expanding the retail sale of beer. Previously, retail sales of beer were prohibited between the hours of 3 a.m. and 8 a.m. on Sundays. Prohibition was nearly a century ago, he said. This legislation pack package breathes some fresh life into a state's antiquated alcohol laws by permitting wine and liquor stores to be open for additional hours on Sunday, allowing for sale of promotional items and more. The changes take effect immediately. Limited to a buy alcohol. The fuck kind of show <laughs> is that? <clears throat> Repeat the phrase. The light is bright and hurts my sight, all right? Happy? Canada has a strategic reserve of syrup? Yeah. <laughs> ah, anything else there? Nope, don't think so. Okay, moving on. Uh, a Boswell man shot his father following an argument over a weed eater. State police criminal complaints provide more details about what led up to Wednesday's domestic-related shooting at the residence of in the Jenner Township. Sorry. Authorities say troopers were contacted after 20-year-old Mason Jack reportedly called 911 to report that he had shot his father. Oedipus was out and about that day. Why buy it when you can steal it? It's a good point. <clears throat> uh, police say the victim suffered a single gunshot wound to the abdomen and had to be flown to, to the... Had to be flown to hospital. According to the affidavit, police say Jack told troopers that he and his father were, had been reportedly visiting a relative's home where they were helping clean out the garage and do yard work. I have no idea why I just put the inflection like that on it. I don't know. Police say that according to Jack, the two began, began arguing after... <sighs> just a second. <clears throat> Police say, according to Jack, objection here, so, uh, <laughs> the two began arguing about some of the lawn equipment, specifically a weed eater that was not working. Troopers say Jack claims that he left the relative's residence and went home, only for his father to follow him, where the re argument reportedly escalated. Police say Jack admitted to telling his father to get the expletive out of his house. Y'all get the shit out of my house. <laughs> uh, Troopers say the victim then reportedly followed Jack into another room in the home where they both pulled out handguns that they each had holstered. Police say the two reportedly engaged in a brief standoff before each allegedly reached for the other's gun and a struggle ensued. As far as I'm concerned, they're both at, at fault then if they're both trying to manhandle each other's guns out of their... No, that's just... Morons. <clears throat> Trooper said that the two reportedly dropped their weapons and, and the struggle became physical with both men striking each other. According to the affidavit, Jack reportedly fled to the another room where he admitted to retrieving a second weapon, a 357 Magnum revolver, and returned to the previous room. Police say Jack claimed that during the struggle he lost his glasses and could not see what his father was doing, but be believed that he was looking for something. Trooper say Jack admitted that he believed his father was attempting to retrieve his gun, so he fired one shot from the revolver. Ooh, this is interesting. This is interesting. Where's Branko when you need him? Investigators say that he fired the shot. He stated that he began to render aid to his father when he called 911. Authorities say the victim reportedly suffered multiple abdominal injuries. Abdominal. Why, why am I not saying abdominal? Abdominal, right. There we go. To his stomach, wall, and colon. 
His current, his current condition is unknown. According to online court records, he was arraigned on multiple charges, including two felony counts of aggravated assault and is being held at Somerset County Jail. Uh, what state is this? Uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, where do I go? Got that. Second update. State police have identified the 20-year-old accused of shooting the man during the domestic... Uh, oh, okay. So, because originally they were investigating, officers were, had responded, so they've included... They're just saying that they've included further details. Um... So yeah, there we go. We're Don't learning more fight about with family members over dispute at a weed whackers, County basically. Home. The authorities say led to a man getting sh Jen and Sean State Police say 20-year-old Mason Jack fired one bullet into his father's stomach as a result of a physical altercation. I love this. Brock Owen's 16. You're right. He does look like he's 16. Between the two. The incident happened just after two yesterday afternoon at a Jenner Township home along DeMarco Road, state police say. According to the affidavit, Jack told state troopers the incident started as a verbal argument related to a weed eater. Okay, hang on. I was complaining about my own thing, like verbal argument. Okay. Wait, what's that? Bronco is still trying to figure out how to have an OnlyFans page linked to that one lady on Legal Vice's show the other night. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's really bad. But thank you for that. I needed that. All right, fuck it. Let's move on. <clears throat> a judge has ruled that a couple's rights have been violated. In Alpena, a 74-page opinion by a federal judge, Thomas Luddington, ruled that Michael and Susan Mockeridge had their Fourth Amendment rights violated when their neighbor and three government officials searched the property without a warrant. Why the hell was the neighbor searching for the searching the property in the first place? Um... Uh, <clears throat> The case now heads to a jury trial, which is scheduled to take place on March 5, 2024, in the U.S. District Eastern U.S. District Court, Eastern District of Michigan. The trial will determine what damages, if any, the Mockridges are owed. According to the court's opinion, the neighbor, Keith Krentz, Altona County Building Department official Harry Harvey, and now former Caledonia Township Zoning Officer Ken Gibson, uh, are you fucking kidding? Look at this guy's title! And District Health Department Number Two Environmental Health Program Coordinator David Schmidt, Dave, get another job. In June 2021, visited five recreational mini cabins located on 40 acres of property owned by the Mockridges south of Hubbard Lake. The unannounced inspection of the property came after several anonymous complaints about the cabins that they claimed were falsely made as a result of Krentz's connections. The officials never sought permission to enter the property. The government officials never attempted to obtain warrants to do the search, according to the ruling. Harvey and Schmidt argued that they couldn't possibly know that the mini cabins would qualify as places protected by the Fourth Amendment. Luddington's opinion rebuts that argument, stating that the men were aware that people sleep in mini cabins and thus probably should have assumed that they were protected by the Fourth Amendment. The Mockridge's attorney... Philip Ellison said he's happy that the, with the court's opinion and hopes that it serves as a warning to other government officials. We are very happy to change the for, for the chance to go to trial, he said. Hopefully with this, government officials will understand that they need to respect private property rights. Harvey continues to deny any wrongdoing and insists that the whole case is being blown out of proportion. The whole deal is being turned upside down. We don't feel like we have done anything wrong. Uh, contacted to speak with Schmidt regarding the court's opinion, an official at the District Health Department Number 2 responded saying that they had no comment at this time. Neither of the defendants in the case could be reached. Yeah, I'm shocked. Who the... Uh, I did see that. He sold the shirt for $1,600. Personally, I kind of feel like I probably would have paid a little bit more than that, but I was otherwise indisposed. Uh, just because it would have been really funny to like... Actually, you know, I can't, I can't really say it. <laughs> um, who is Luda, Jeff or Nick? Me. <laughs> Honestly, no. See, and here's the thing. Like, you don't actually... Like... Hang on. Okay. Let's get one thing clear. We're all just out there having fun. If you consider something to be lewd, 
that's based on your own opinions and your own interpretation of things okay there's a very sp specific reason that i now have to do kinky corner on locals which may or may not be today or tomorrow so keep an eye out for those of you that actually watch that um the simple fact of the matter is we're just trying to have fun so i personally don't think that um you really need to compare which YouTube personality is looter than another. Like, why you need to... There's no need to get popcorn, Isabel. I'm not going on a rant. I'm just saying. Um, can't imagine how you'd use an expert who has an online presence and don't check the social media beforehand. The PD office was on something else. Look. <coughs> excuse me. I'm not really going to comment about the fact that the um, Public Defender's Office were complete idiots and morons and very much should have probably done at least a Google search on who they were having to uh, attend and represent and that sort of thing. Also, I'm not a big fan of individuals and I'm not going to comment on the fact that I don't believe they had any right to see his materials beforehand. I think that if someone's providing services free of charge and you've invited them to speak... I certainly wouldn't go on record of saying that it's entirely up to them how they present their own information and their own, um, how they, how they present, how they, make the, how they make the presentation. See, this is why when I don't put my thoughts in order, it always comes out as rambling. I do apologize, people. Um, <sighs> he knows what he's doing when he invites guests. Um, but no, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, look, I don't, I don't really think there's any point in complaining that somebody doesn't meet your own expectations. Like, just because you assume that somebody is a conservative family man on YouTube doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have a lewd streak. That all comes part and parcel. Admittedly, I get away with a little bit more because I've got the Aussie background. I've got the stereotype of being a little bit more crass, being a little bit more lewd, dropping a C-bomb in the middle of a stream, things like that. But even I don't necessarily do that. The point is that I think that if you have a problem with someone on YouTube, I think it's more that you need to take a step back and have a look at your own expectations of what is being provided to you as content. Because for the most part, it's the same as getting offended and complaining about something you see on TV. On the remote, there's a little red button with a circle and a line on it. If you don't like the content, use it so um getting a little upset with when people telling me how to pronounce words eh. <laughs> the lewdest lord tube is obviously the one and only wood duddy stack well anyway just being a bitch and twisting your words hayden eh all good just learn sign language <laughs> the sign language for re and democrat is very similar <laughs> Oh, that's great. I wouldn't go that far, Timple Gay, Timple's Gay Magic. I think that's a little bit harsh. But um, I, th I, I genuinely think... Like... There's, some, there's very specific internet drama at the moment that I desperately want to comment, but I know full well that I shouldn't. I'm staying the fuck out of it. Um, you sent me the clip. Thank you, Stingy. Um... Do you have a dog or a cat with white hair? Oh, what? Can you see this? I got a Labrador. Yeah. Uh, but more to the point, I'm also going grey. So I, the, some of the white hair is from me. Um, but the point is, what I can't understand is the people in chat. Like, I get that you can support your favourite, like, content creator and, like, or YouTuber, personal rumble, other media personalities... But why just inflame things? Do you really have nothing better to do than sit at your keyboard and bitch and moan and complain and criticise people? No, no, it's, it's fine, Jude. This isn't about you. <laughs> um, it's... I feel like I should have a big-ass stamp across my forehead right now that says, Welcome to the internet, you fuckwit. But, um... You know... we have a new viewer hello i'm new good to see you thank you for dropping by um apologies for you dropping in right while i'm just on a little mini sort of rambling rant uh we will be getting back to the news in just a minute with some more law news and laughter but um 
at this point, it's like, I just, I'm just like, why, why would you bother wasting the time and effort? Like, <laughs> amateur icon class. Guilty is charged. Oh, well. All right, let's get stuck back into it, shall we? Uh, because we just had the thing about the log cabins and the Fourth Amendment because people need to fuck right off. Um, thought I basically grew up on the internet to realize I really knew nothing. Need to print that quote on a t-shirt. Grant, there's a few things I need to get on a t-shirt, honestly. Um, I found my piece of paper that I had certain things written on, and my favorite one so far is, There is fuckery afoot! <laughs> Bitching and moaning and grandstandings, what made the internet great? The problem is people that let that consume their thoughts rather than treating it as entertainment. That is well put. That is very well put. Everyone needs a hobby. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So, a Georgia man has been hit with a $1.4 million speeding ticket before officials clarified an error. He said he, first, he was first told by the court to either pay up or appear in court after driving 90 in a 55 zone. A Georgia man was left reeling after receiving a $1.4 million speeding ticket. But city officials say the figure was just a placeholder, not the actual fine. Uh, you need t-shirts? I've got t-shirts. Mandy, for fuck's sake. If you want to time yourself out, go for it. Um, favorite quote is drink a cup of concrete and harden the fuck up. Yeah. Which, by the way, I do actually have on a mug. Uh, actually, it may not be on sale at the moment. But if you feel like it, you can go to AussieOverlordMerch.com and I do officially have hats, t-shirts. I do apologize for the prices. I don't have any control over that. I have taken the least amount of profit on it whatsoever. But um, I think like the cap is like 60 bucks. Um, you're facing the corner now. <laughs> Classic comic where a guy... Something, something. Um, that's why I haven't started doing like doing content on my site. I'm realizing there's so much internet essential history I needed to learn from. I feel like I did a good thing. Probably, Isabel. When I realized I was missing the internet history, the ukulele apology dropped, and I was like, wow, more learning. <laughs> there's a classic comic where a guy asks his wife to go to bed, and he replies, I cannot. Someone is wrong on the internet. <laughs> See, the other, the other... And that reminds me of the other one as well, which is... Um, a uh, a reporter asks a woman, so who makes the decisions in your household? And she says, oh, well, I make the day-to-day -day decisions and my husband makes the very important decisions. And she sa and he says, okay, so what are the day-to-day -day decisions that you make? Well, what would you budget for? How much electricity bill is? How much it gets paid? Uh, where we send the kids to school? What we're going to be having for dinner for the next week? Uh, which washing needs to be done and when? And so what are the important decisions that your husband makes? Well, generally, it's whether or not there should be a military presence in Bosnia, how, the, how everything's going in the Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, Stingy. Uh, the shirt itself, the I've been a member for a year and all I got was this T-shirt. Um, that is up there. It is $30, but like I've got advertised for like $3,500. You need to get the code from me. I couldn't make it 100% off. The, 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 main, the major discount you can give is like 99% off. Um... But yeah, so if anyone actually wants that shirt, let me know, okay? So I can work things out. Uh, <laughs> okay, where was I? Uh, placeholder, not an actual fine. Connor Cato tells WSAV TV in Savannah that he received a citation uh, after getting pulled over in September for driving 90 in a 55 zone. He called the court thinking the figure was a typo, but said he was told to either pay up or appear in court in December. Savannah officials say anyone caught driving more than 35 above the speed limit has to appear in court where the judge will determine what the actual fine is. Also, it didn't actually matter what they wrote. Um, <laughs> 3500 for a T-shirt, is it Gucci? No, it's just very, very special and very, very specific. And if you have been a member for more than 12 months, the price gets 99% off. <laughs> um, the officials say anyone caught more... Yeah, they said that the figure Cato received reflected an automatically generated placeholder. The actual fine cannot exceed $1,000 in addition to state-mandated costs. The officials tell WSAV the court is working on adjusting the language in e-citations to avoid confusion in the future. Uh, <laughs> I'll never get over <laughs> Macho Grande. <laughs> okay. This one's a little bit sad. 
because a man is now part of his own Halloween. A man is unfortunately now part of his own Halloween display. A man known for iconic holiday displays has died falling off a ladder while decorating his home for Halloween. A man in Wisconsin known for his iconic Halloween decorations died on Monday after falling off the ladder while decorating the house. Jeff Oman, who wore a skull-covered hat and had a zest for life, uh, his friend Mary Mayer, Meyer said that she was a little intimidated by him at first impression. I didn't know what kind of person he was, and it made me a little nervous to just to see how he dressed. I mean, looks are definitely deceiving. He has a heart of gold like he would do anything for anyone. He would talk to anyone, get the sh give the shirt off his back, just a very kind person. I love the leather jacket. That's sweet. Kind of like steampunk Halloween, though. Uh, Omen's girlfriend, Sal, said kids would drag their parents to look at his one-of-a-kind holiday displays he put out every year. He did a lot of stuff for the community, kind of like an icon. Uh, Maya said Omen threw huge Halloween parties and spent hours getting his house ready for the spooky season. He also decorated his house for Christmas that was an icon of the city also. So just remember how much he loved his community and he wanted to spread the joy to everyone. Yes. He died doing what he loved. That's a very, very well put. <clears throat> you should get the most realistic Halloween display for the area. <laughs> I just want to see if they've got footage. Oh, it's like two minutes. What? The loss of one of their oh, I don't need audio. Jeff Hang on. Omen is described as an icon <laughs> in the area. Louis, Louis he passed away no. unexpectedly <laughs> earlier this week. NBC 15 Shane and Najawin spent the day reaching out to Omen's loved ones, trying to get a better understanding of who he was as a person, Shana. Those in the Beaver Dam area and even some out-of-towners might recognize this home behind me. Well, that is the Omens home. Jeff and his family go... Bad Omens. Oh, that was bad. Go all out for every holiday, especially Halloween. Like a Jeff was preparing for the holiday <laughs> Monday, putting up decorations when he fell from a ladder and died. First impressions was I was a little intimidated by him. I didn't know what kind of person he was and made me a little nervous just seeing how... <laughs> He dressed. No, I think we're back in Beaverton. Yes, he's got a hat with skulls he bought. Loved ones say Jeff. Oh, Beaver Dam! It actually is in Beaver Dam. <laughs> I stand corrected. It actually is Beaver Dam. Life. I mean, looks are definitely deceiving. And love for the Beaver Dam community. I know I shouldn't be laughing because a guy died, but come on, that's hilarious. <laughs> he was larger than life. He mm. was so down to earth. And he would do it. He fell off a ladder and you say he was down to earth. Phrasing, lady, come on. Anything for anybody. Known for his kind heart and one of a kind decorations. How about a beaver damn t-shirt? So many kids dragged their parents to come and see everything and... No, this is why I need to keep a pin in for the community, and he just, he was kind of like an icon. He has spent so many hours and days getting his house ready for Halloween. The community especially excited come October. He threw huge Halloween parties down at his shop that tons of people would come to, and it was just a really good time there. Loved ones say, Omen's holiday spirit and love of life will never be forgotten. He died no, doing what he loved. He loved Halloween. He had over 70 life-size skeletons. He also decorated his house for Christmas, that it was an icon of our city also. So just remember how he loved his community and he wanted to spread the joy to everyone. Okay. Moment of silence for the guy that clearly loved Halloween a little too much, but that spread a lot of joy to his community. That's enough. All right, moving on. <clears throat> okay, the Supreme Court is to consider whether a, a conservative effort to block a federal power and a challenge to qualified immunity for police officers. There you go. Where's Jason Jay when you need him? They're looking to remove qualified immunity. Uh, the Supreme Court on Friday added another case to its docket that asks the justices to overturn decades-old precedent to scale back the power of federal agencies as well as a case that looks at qualified immunity for police officers. The new case is a companion to a similar dispute involving a herring fisherman that the justices have already agreed to hear his term. 
this term. Uh, although the court did not explain its thinking, it's likely added the new case because Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson is recused from the first case, having dealt with the lower court judge before her ele elevation to the high court. The pair of cases represent a conservative attack on the so-called administrative state. For decades, conservatives argued that federal agencies are unaccountable to the public and have become too powerful in, viola in violation of the separation of powers. How the courts decide the two cases could change the way the government tackles such issues as climate change, immigration, labour conditions and public health. At issue in both appeals are herring fishermen in the Atlantic who say the National Marine Fisheries Service do not have the authority to require them to pay the salaries of government monitors who ride aboard the fishing vessels to make sure federal regulations are being followed. Why the fuck would they have to pay their salaries? What the hell? In agreeing to hear the case, the justices signaled that they will consider a 1984 decision of Chevron v. Natural Resources Defense Council that sets forward factors to determine when courts should defer to government agency interpretation of the law. First, they examine a statute to see whether Congress's intent is clear. If it is, then the matter is settled. But if there is ambiguity, the court defers to the agency's expertise. Why? If anything, it should always be that clauses go against those that draft it. Uh, the justices on Friday also agreed to hear the case of the city council member from Texas who says she was arrested in retaliation for calling for removal of a police ally. The case follows the, uh, allows the court to revisit the scope of a legal doctrine called qualified immunity, which protects police officers from civil claims. The case concerns Sil Sylvia Gonzalez, of a Castle Hills, Texas council member, who led an attempt to circulate a citizen's petition to remove the city manager, an ally of police, from office. There's Gonzalez. Gonzalez was arrested under a Texas tampering law that makes it a crime for concealing or removing a, rec a government record. She claims she inadvertently placed a copy of the document into her binder and admitted her mistake. She spent a day in jail, handcuffed, wearing an orange jail suit. The district attorney dropped the charges against her and she later sued in federal court alleging illegal retaliation in violation of the First Amendment, saying that the city manager had engineered a plan to arrest her and remove her from office. She argued in court papers that the tampering statute used against her was overly broad and had never been used to charge for someone for the uneventful offence of putting a piece of paper in the wrong pile. Under normal circumstances, a person alleging retaliatory arrest must demonstrate the police have not proven probable cause to arrest her. But lawyers for Gonzalez have argued that there is an exception to the rule in cases in which the law is not routinely enforced. A district court denied qualified immunity to the officers, but Gonzalez lost a case at the Fifth Circuit appeal, uh, which held that there was probable cause to arrest her and that it necessarily defeated her retaliatory arrest claim. We'll have to keep an eye on that one. I, I, I would presume that um, Kurt will probably be looking at that when that one comes out, but uh, that's interesting. Uh... Wait, what was that? Qualified immunity has turned into a monster and needs to get rid of the requirement to find a case exactly on point. Yeah, well, the police chief and the mayor of the city resigned suddenly back in July. Huh. Good old Fifth Circuit of Appeals. Well, you know, good old's a relative term. Um, <clears throat> oh, damn it, I don't have the trigger warning. Eek! Okay, uh, woo, 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 woo! Trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning, sexual content coming, trigger warning. <clears throat> Woman who performs sex addicts outside of Swindon, Iceland, is back in court. A Swindon woman who performs sex acts outside a town set a supermarket in broad daylight has returned to court for a similar offence. Tia Stokes, how she has not changed her, her name to Strokes, of Caulfield Road has been sentenced for outraging public decency. The 33-year-old pled guilty to committing an offence of outraging public decency by behaving in an indecent manner, namely sexual activity. The incident happened on June 3 in Swindon and Stokes entered her plea on October 11. She also pled guilty to stealing wine from Iceland on July 15 and stealing food from Greg's on August 19. The defendant received a community order requiring her to carry out nine months of drug rehab and up to 20 days of other rehab activities. Police were called to the scene at around 3.50pm with six officers arriving by bicycle, car and van. They got there fast because they, they may or may not be hoping to engage with services before they have to put the cuffs on her. And maybe afterwards. Uh, for that offence, she received a, uh, uh, for the offence, she received a 12-month community order, which included six months of drug rehab and 15 days of rehabilitative activity. What kind of rehab? Uh, is she going to Sex Anonymous? Like, what, what's what's the go here? Thought you said two strokes. I'm not going to comment further. 
<laughs> That's why Nicholas left. There were cops in a small town who quit after the chief did. They were making less than $20 an hour. How much money would it take to have you fight violent crimes for, for criminals for a living? That's a damn good question. Look, if cops did their job properly... I'm not going to go on the rant. I'm not going to go on the rant. I'm not going to do it today. Not, n not the rant. I'm not doing the rant. Let's just say that there are many public officials that are not paid what they are due, and there are very there are a small number of public officials that are paid exorbitant amounts in excess of what they are due. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, Kerry Ann Horwood <laughs> also pled guilty to outraging public decency in connection with the same incident. The 41-year-old was sentenced to a 12-month community order with six months alcohol treatment requirement. Going to Sex Anonymous was the problem in the first place? Probably. Okay, so whatever happened... Oh, see, here's the thing, though. No, it's Kerry Ann. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the assumption. Based on the name Kerry Ann, I'm going to assume that it is a woman or someone of the trans persuasion that engaged with Miss Stokes. <laughs> Don't mean to cough on a rant here. Well, you know. <laughs> All right, moving on. <clears throat> and another repeat, a few, a re repeat offender. A teen accused of stabbing and killing a fellow pupil is back in court. The, in the murder case of a 16-year-old who allegedly stabbed and killed another teenager has been adjourned to Thursday in Pinetown Magistrates Court. In March last year, the 15-year-old at Jaden Glazer that's a little too close to home, was allegedly stabbed after school by a 16-year-old grade 10 fellow pupil, Ashley, in Pinetown. The two teens both attended chosen independent studies where Glazer was in grade 9. It's alleged that on the day of the stabbing, there had been a fist fight between them, um, oh, and the accused who cannot be named as he's still a minor. The 16-year-old faces charges of murder. The trial is being heard in camera. Uh, so far, the court has heard evidence from a teen who had recorded the moments leading up to the stabbing on his cell phone. He told the court that a fist fight had allegedly been set for that day, and that it was the accused allegedly stabbed at Glazer. The video clip was played in court, and it was Jaden seen walking to the to the boys with hands behind his back. He had no weapon. The accused just stabs him, and then Jaden lays on the grass bleeding out. Previously, the Daily News reported that Glazer's mother, Jarena Pretorius, who had been in court, said that the voices in the video could be heard saying, No weapons. We said no weapons. After being adjourned at the end of August, the matter resumed on October 2, when it was adjourned to October 5 for the state to finalise evidence being led against by against it by what? Being led by its second witness. The case was then adjourned to October 12 for the third and final witness, and then to October 16, after the state finished with this witness. Why is magistrate court handling a murder case? Isn't that for like misdemeanors? Uh, depends on the uh, <clears throat> on the county. Uh, this is in England, so magistrates can actually hear murder cases. Because so, I think it's I think it's mostly because he's under the age of eighteen, but um, it doesn't necessarily have to be in a district or higher court. So, assuming gender. Hey, I assume gender on the basis of the name and what was utilised. So, so okay. Um. X is being sued again. It's, it seems like every it must be a Tuesday because Elon's getting sued again. This time he's been fined six hundred and ten thousand dollars in Australia for failing to crack down on child SA material. Of all the things that he's getting sued for, of all the things that they're in trouble for, workers' violations, all that sort of shit, I kind of feel like this one's a little bit more serious. You call that a knife? This is a knife. <laughs> Just for you, Mandy. Uh, the company formerly known as Twitter became one of the first online platforms to be issued with a fine under Australia's Online Safety Act. X, the company formerly known as Twitter, fuck you, Guardian, has become the first online platform to be issued with a $610,000 fine under Australia's Online Safety Act for its failure to meet basic online safety expectations. And I should point out, they are very basic. It's literally, do not show murders. Do not host child SA material. Do not allow for dissemination of those things. Um, <clears throat> X has 28 days to either pay the fine issued by the eSafety Commissioner or provide responses to questions X ignored from the Commissioner on its work to crack down on child 
child essay material on the platform. The legal notices were issued to X, Google, TikTok, Twitch, and Discord in February, following the first round of notices sent to Apple, Meta, Microsoft, Snap, and Omegle. For once, the Australian government's actually doing something that I agree with. They're actually going after each of the tech, uh, each of the tech companies for, you know, fucking over A, free speech, but B, for promoting, like, child essay material. No, no, abomination. It's not that they were fine with Twitter doing it. It's that they took a couple of years for the legislation to get through. This was always on the on, this was always on the cards. I'd actually been following this, so um, still think we should call it Twix. No, because then that'll attract Lofty. <laughs> uh, in a report on the tech company's responses to the notices released on Monday, the commissioner found that many of the largest service providers were failing to adequately detect, remove, or prevent child abuse material. Frankly, I was surprised at how hard it was to extract the precise and accurate information, and frankly surprised that some companies that should have much more sophisticated and mature systems and resources didn't seem willing or able to provide that information that had been provided to, by other companies, said Inman Grant. Or in the case of Twitter, to leave things totally blank to obfuscate from providing inaccurate information. The commissioner also found that X and Google did not comply with the notices, with Google giving generic responses to some questions, while some questions to X went entirely unanswered. Google has been given a formal warning, while X was given an infringement notice. Google's Director of Public Policy and De uh, Government Affairs in Australia, Lucinda Longcroft, said in a statement that protecting children was the most important work Google does, and that the company had invested heavily in the work to stop the spread of child essay material. We remain committed to these efforts and collaborating constructively and in good faith with the e-safety commissioner at the government and the industry on the shared goal of keeping Australians safer online. When Grant issued the notices earlier this year, she noted that X's owner, Musk, had indicated the child's safety was number one his, his number one priority on the platform, but the report found that three months after he took ownership of the company and slashed its workforce by 80%, the automatic detection of CA material fell from 90% to 75%. Oh, that sucks. Uh, the company told the e-safety commissioner that it had improved... Uh, how recent is it? I think the most recent legislation was like January. Um... <clears throat> While not marking, marking Musk on his meeting his promise, Eamon Grant said it was a pretty big deal. She was not even able to get answers from the company on how many trust and safety employees it has anymore. The companies were initially given 35 days to respond to the notices, but multiple extensions resulted in the process taking several months. We understand that it's hard and it's probably very confronting and exposing for these companies to actually say, well, we have said this is our top priority, but we're really not doing anything. Yeah, look, it's, it's quite disturbing to think that um, anything from the takeover... But I mean, as bad as it sounds, I do kind of feel like Google's got a far, far more reduced excuse. I mean, at least with Twitter, Musk took over. He's been rebranding. He's been doing all sorts of things. Not that that's any sort of a defense for it dropping by 15% of automatic detection. But <laughs> you dress us down for comparing streamers, but Lofty is disqualified. No, I did not. I, I didn't say anything about comparing streamers. I specifically said, if you don't like someone, don't watch them. I class Lofty as an acquaintance, if not a friend. I'm allowed to make fun of him. <laughs> um, uh, where are we? They've been signing up for voluntary principles, including the Five Eyes Voluntary Principles to Combat Child SA. And we've, what we found out through all 13 companies that we questioned is that none of them are living up to the principles. She found TikTok, above all, the more transparent than the others. I'm sorry, what the fuck? ByteDance owned, almost entirely Chinese government propaganda propagandized TikTok was the most transparent? Okay, all I'm saying, all I'm saying, Elon, is that if Twitter, if, um, if TikTok can lie through their fucking teeth, in my opinion, then you probably should have been able to too, rather than just leaving the boxes blank. Just saying. <clears throat> um... Who was the time to remove the illegal content when there's so many extremists to censor? Oh, I know, right? Hello, YouTube. How you doing? <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, Jason. <laughs> I've got to have him on at some stage, and then you can all see for yourself. <laughs> um, if X, which is no longer has a presence in Australia, fails to respond to the infringement notice and does not comply with writing information sought, the office can take X to federal court, which can fine the company up to $780,000 a day, backdated to March this year. 
That doesn't mean we're done either. We have periodic notice powers. We want to put pressure on all the levers that we have at our disposal to make sure they're improving and lifting safety standards. Guardian Australia sought response from X and received the standard automated reply to the press email address. <laughs> For anyone that doesn't know, if you send an email to the press address, the automated response is a poop emoji. <laughs> Or at least it was the last time I checked. <laughs> you don't want to lose your social credit score. Well. Um, all right, where are we? Okay, and we're going to finish up with New Jersey woman sues Hooters, claiming she wasn't hired because of her dreadlocks. A South Brunswick woman is suing Hooters for discrimination, claiming she wasn't hired by the restaurant because of her dreadlocks. Anaya Jones alleges in a lawsuit filed on October 5 in Middlesex County Superior Court that she was filling out the paperwork on the first day of work at the Hooters at the uh, corner of Cottontail Lane and West Canal Road in Franklin. She was told she was not getting the job because of her dreadlocks. What? She'd already been through everything. She was filling out the paperwork and then she's told she's not getting the job because she has dreadlocks. <laughs> I'm with Paul and Thunder on this one. Yeah, that's the reason. Uh, according to the lawsuit filed by Willens, Goldman and Spitzer of Woodbridge, the New Jersey law against discrimination prohibits discrimination against traits historically associated with race, including but not limited to hair texture, hair type and protective hairstyles. I don't want to get into the dreadlock cultural appropriation thing today. I'm guessing she had a horrible personality. I consider Australia to be part of the West despite its geography, the people from Western culture. Well, thank you, Trussorian Fraud. I appreciate that. The dreadlocks were a chest hit. Oh. See, the only way this is worse is if the manager was a midget and said, your hair smells nice today. <laughs> or even worse, your hair smells disgusting. Wash it. Hooters <laughs> um, <clears throat> has not filed a response to the lawsuit. The lawsuit say states that Jones applied for the job at the restaurant in September 22. A few weeks later, a manager told her he was about to hire her, but the who, but the there was one problem. The manager told her that the company's policy requires service hair to be worn naturally, no braids or dredge, dreads. <laughs> Jones responded that her hair was natural and dreaded, and that she could not unlock her hair to comply with the policy, but she could make sure that it was freshly retwisted. The manager told her to read up the company's policy change, which allows service to wear dreadlocks, but you have to... What? You have to wear hair... Wear... Neaten down? So if I'm white, but I have dreadlocks, I'm considered black and can get them reparations. Jesus Christ, abomination. <laughs> uh, she's probably not qualified to play lingerie football either. I would say not, probably. If the dreads smell, then yeah, no. But some people know how to keep the dreads clean. It's pretty close to it's pretty close to know how to keep dreads clean, braids clean. Oh, how to, it's pretty close to keeping braids clean. Okay. Uh, at the end of their text exchange, Jones was told to report to work for the following day, and she could wear her hair up during her shifts, according to the lawsuit. When she came into the restaurant, she had her dreadlocks near and down, and was completing forms when the manager returned from the kitchen, where the franchise's general manager said Jones could not be hired. The law prohibiting discrimination based on hairstyles associated with race was prompted by a 2018 incite incitement incident uh, when a referee ordered an Atlantic County High School wrestler to cut his dreadlocks or forfeit a bout. So there you go. There's that. Oh, all right, peeps. I'm going to call it a day, uh, mainly because I've got stuff to do. But as always, please remember... You are not a piece of shit. You do have value and you do contribute to society. And thank you very much to everybody that has been watching. Thank you to the 78 of you, presumably, on YouTube. Because I don't think that my software picks up Rumble. But, um, yeah, as always, please stay healthy, wealthy, and wise. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Let's see how much of this actually works now. Um, where are we? Oh, please remember as well, two weeks from now, Sourced Saturday is coming up. I'm bringing back my drinking streams. So get the, uh, get the word out there that I am actually going to be putting my liver to the test. Uh, at some point, I'm hoping to have um, some more guests on. I put the word out on Twitter and on a community post for suggestions. Um, yeah, if you have any thoughts, questions, suggestions, you know where to hit me up. But uh, yeah, let's give this a go.
Damn it. <laughs> I was sure someone said that they'd subscribe during this during this stream. So that should have shown subscribers. It's, it shows anyone that gives us super, super chat. Anyone that gets a membership or becomes a member. So either I haven't... Um, yes, there are end credits now, Captain Bitto. Either I haven't set it up properly or it's just not connected or something because I, I trust you guys. I trust that at least somebody subscribed during this show. So anyway... <laughs> yeah, thank you, nobody. <laughs> Next is Nightbot. Uh, uh, there is a bot you know, on the cards, Ghost Re I'm working on that. Um, but yeah, anyway. All right. Where are we? Uh, out. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Don't mind me. I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. Excuse me, please. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Nope. Fuck this shit, I'm out. All right then. I don't know what the fuck just happened, but I don't really care. I'ma get the fuck up out of here. Fuck this shit, I'm 